So hey there everybody, as always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping in and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich, I'm the channel host, and normally we're talking about building our small drone business, the equipment that goes into it, the software, um, you know, all the miscellaneous items, and you know, just for people who are beginning, or maybe you're already building your own drone business and you come by here just to see some different information occasionally. So. Several days ago, I posted a video on aligning ortho mosaic photos so that we could show before and afters, you know, two weeks ago versus today, several weeks into the future, the whole idea of that. And while I was recording it, I was also thinking about the anger that's out there right now about Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, end user licensing, and now the feds are looking to sue Adobe as well. So a lot of people are wanting to get off the Adobe bandwagon and do something else, and there are other software applications out there. And I followed up on my uh, on that video with a quick video on Affinity Photo 2 because I'm taking a second look at Affinity Photo um, because of all this stuff with Adobe to see what I can and can't do. And so, like I said the other day, we did these before and after orthos, so I wanted to do the same thing with Affinity. So I've got my before and after folder right here. I have two GeoTIFFs set up here, um, and they both were exported very similar sizes, so they're going to line up really nice. Now, they were exported from Metashape or WebODM, you know, whatever you're using to generate your orthos. If you're consistent on your outputs, these should align really nicely. So I'm just grabbing these two, and we're going to drag them down onto Affinity Photo 2. So if you would like to know more about this, and more in depth, let me know. Put some comments down below. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and then you'll get notifications when uh, when we're ready for you. So right now, I drag those two in. So I've got uh, solstice June 9th, and over here I've got uh, April 2nd or April 21st. First thing I do is highlight the um, the June 9th, and I'm just going to put in here June 9th so that I remember what that layer's name is. There we go. And then I'm gonna go over to the other one and that's pretty simple, April 21, okay. And I'm gonna go back to my June 9th really quick. I am going to highlight the uh, the layer here. Doesn't that look familiar? The layers here, just like uh, Photoshop. So once again, I'm gonna just Command C and copy that. And now we're gonna go over to April 21st and command v and if we look in our layers now we have june 9th and we have april 21st all right so we've got both of them now and i'm just going to go get my arrow tool here and so one of the things we can do let's look at june 9th and i am just going to drag my opacity and i can start to see it's not perfectly aligned here but if I give it a little nudge, and once again, this one is not for doing measurements or anything. Um, this is not about accurate data. This is about a nice overlay so that you can see the changes before and after. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. Let's drop the opacity down some more. So these are very, very close, and you can actually get better with this aligning these. So I am going to just click out here. I'm gonna select June 9th again. I'm gonna shift click so that we've got April 21st as well. And let's align center on this. So it moved it just a touch. And let me see, align middle really quick. And all right, so now let's drop that opacity again. Yeah, see, it's just slightly off with that second one. So this will be just a bit more experimentation. Adobe does snap this together faster and easier, I do have to say. But when we're doing a before and after display on the websites for our clients, is this going to be close enough? Sure looks like it. Let's uh, zoom in here. And I'm just going to take a closer look, play with the opacity here. All right. These are really looking pretty good. And like we can see, whoops, Command Z. Um, I did not mean to do that. Uh, we can see right in here that this is uh, definitely um, looking good for us as far as if I do that, uh, if I do that opacity drop. Okay, so with that, I can actually zoom back out here. 
I've got these two together. I could do a quick crop in here. So if I just wanted to get rid of some of the junk. Um, also, we're going to go with unconstrained on this one. So let's just we'll bring it down a bit. We'll pull this up a bit. And this is up to you, your tastes and preferences, and how you display everything uh, for your clients. I'm going to hit return on here. And so now we're right on this. What I could do next is actually save out each of the layers, just like I did in the previous presentation with Photoshop. And, you know, export June 9th, export April 21st, and then put them in the before and after viewer that you prefer to use. Now, we utilize uh, 2020 before and after for WordPress, but we've also used Revolution Sliders before and after slider as well, and that's worked really nice. So, in answer to the question, can we align our orthos for before and after for presentations for our clients in Affinity Photo 2? The short answer is yes. So most everything that you can do in Photoshop, you can do in Affinity Photo too. By the way, down in the comments, let me know if we should take a beginner's view of Affinity Photo 2 and walk through it together and do a little learning together. Let me know down in the comments below and we can see about doing that. All right, everyone, I'm off and we'll see you again real soon.